find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the poor. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's another indie mayhem show. Sorgatron here, Mike Sorg here in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, doing a little video production up here in the area. And then my compatriot, a commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling in Texas, Eamon. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Sorgatron. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I'm uh, uh, looking forward to hear to about uh, somebody from your area uh, tonight, uh, and we'll actually touch a little bit on uh, the DBI three that I got to attend on Friday night uh, after talking with the great Ju- Juice Jennings last week on the show. Uh, but in the meantime, hey, go please check out uh, our friend Basic Sickness at the, the intro for this show at basicsickness.com. He's got a lot of tracks to download. You can also check out this show and others. Uh, other wrestling shows uh, that we do over WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can look us up on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, video and audio forms. Uh, like us, subscribe us, comment, share it with your friends, please, if you're digging this kind of stuff. And you can drop us a line to GoodTimesAtWrestlingMayhemShow.com or to uh, 412-206-WMS0 if you have something to say on the hotline. Leave a voicemail there. And you can find us on Twitter at Mayhem Show or the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, or the great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Uh, And, of course, we're here uh, live every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And we start about 9 p.m. with the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, talking about the big leagues there. Uh, but in the meantime, Eamon, I want to hear uh, a little bit more about uh, what's going on with Inspire Pro Wrestling. I understand your guest is going to tell us uh, about that. Yes, uh, we're, we're filling out the trifecta of, uh, of uh, owners for Inspire Pro Wrestling here tonight. Uh, we've had uh, Justin Bissett on before as well as Josh Montgomery not too long ago. Uh, and now we're filling out with the, the third member of the trio, I guess you could say, behind Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show uh, the co-owner of Inspire Pro, Max Meehan. Max, how are you doing tonight? Um, feeling the glow. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great. Um, so let's get into this. Uh, the question that we always touch on, whether we have wrestlers, uh, promoters, um, whoever we do have on, uh, kind of a break the ice sort of question is, um, what's your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling? Oh, um, I was uh, I was actually raised by my grandmother, and uh, my uh, my my parents weren't really around. Uh, they were gone when I was very young, and uh, she would every Saturday morning drop off, drop me off with my uncle Kevin, and uh, we would watch uh, WWF on uh, on a local station, and uh, that 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 caught my brain. I don't think he quite knew what to do with me at the time, but when. Uh, when I kind of responded to wrestling, I think that was sort of like a bonding, uh, a, a bonding issue between us. So, yeah, that's that's those, those are my first uh, memories of, of the old Saturday morning WWF show from from the '80s. Awesome. Were there any sort of, I guess, talents, uh, uh, stuff that you sort of remember and it like sticks out to you of, of stuff you watched uh, during that time? Or? Um, yeah, uh, for some reason, Adrian Adonis really resonated with me. I, I don't know why I was so compelled by him, but I just found him to be so loathsome and, and entertaining. I think Adonis probably has a lot to do with why I tend to gravitate toward, uh, toward liking heels. Um, you know, <laughs> heels are generally more compelling than faces most of the time, you know, for me at least anyway. Definitely, yeah. Um, so before we get into uh, your your involvement in wrestling, because uh, uh, you're sort of, I, I guess I could I, the best way to put it is sort of newer in the wrestling world uh, since you're starting with Inspire, but you do have a history of, of, of do some writing, uh, basically. Uh, well, how did you get started uh, in in that aspect? Oh, I've uh, I've been writing since I was I was really young, uh, since I was uh, probably. 12 or so. Uh, I, I was first published uh, when I was 13. Uh, I had a film essay published uh, at that age, and I was really fortunate enough to have a, a lot of uh, sort of well-known mentors at the time, like uh, my, my grandmother, 
uh, was friends with uh, Robert Block, who wrote uh, the the Psycho novels, which the Hitchcock uh, film films were. Well, the original Hitchcock film was based upon. And I also mm-hmm. knew uh, Kurt Siedmak, who was like a kind of a mentor to me, who actually wrote like a lot of the early Universal horror films. Uh, and yeah, from there it just it, it just kind of kind of rolled. I was I've always really loved film. I've always really loved storytelling. Um, the economy of uh, Wrestling storytelling always really appealed to me because it's so like bare bones in terms of the stage and you know getting a story over with with, with very very minimal you know props and stuff for the most part um, or or much of a setting. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've I've always written. I got into screenwriting when I moved to New York when I was in my twenties, and uh, I've been doing that since. I do I do music videos, I do commercials, and I've sold several screenplays. Awesome. And then I think we're going to touch on a sort of aspect of how that sort of influences your wrestling uh, uh, world now that you sort of mentioned. Because uh, the first time actually I ever met you was uh, you were a fan going to shows just like I was. Uh, we, we would go to wrestling shows and I would see you there. But how, how did you become a part of sort of working for a wrestling company with uh, Inspire Pro? How, uh, how did that come about? Um. I, I'm I'm pretty sure you remember uh, the section that I used to sit in being pretty <laughs> rowdy and obnoxious. Uh, it's it's actually been really funny because like I always got the impression that that you and Brandon really didn't like me, and I'm pretty sure some <laughs> actors it's really surreal and awesome that I could like talk to you and talk to my buddy now. Um, yeah, we come, but, come to uh, love each other and come come to sort of see see both of our uh, our crazy uh, fanatic uh, aspects. I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Um, this uh, I, I met Justin Bissonette uh, through through ACW, which we, which we both attended, and uh, I remember one one day uh, mentioning online that I was going to be getting a, a Dragon Gate USA pay per view, and I invited some folks out, and uh, Biz decided to show up, and from there we kind of struck up a friendship. And, you know, even after the uh, IP review was over, we were just talking about what we like and what we don't like about wrestling. And uh, I think I think he maybe appreciated a lot of my opinions and what I thought was was wrong with the company he was working for at the time. And so I think when the opportunity came for him to do something creatively in the wrestling world, he kind of wanted my opinion. I guess he valued it. And because my my initial uh my initial position was basically just to comment on the cards that he wrote and go you know tell him what i thought was wrong or what he could mm-hmm. improve and from there it kind of my, my involvement kind of kind of grew so yeah definitely and i i want to point that out like i i get to see you guys definitely work on on pretty much i mean I get to talk to you on a daily basis of like the happenings in the company and then the stuff that you I mean all of you guys but specifically the stuff I think you, you put into it has been exponential as far as not just like you mentioned like the looking over like cards and stuff like that and now you know sort of helping booking now and, and now all the other aspects that go into running a wrestling show you you've got your hands in now uh, how, how has that sort of evolution been like um Honestly, I, I feel like I kind of got thrown into the deep end right at the start. I uh, I think that, you know, uh, I, I have nothing but respect for anybody that, that put the show together because from the very inception of it to its actual realization, it requires so much more than I think a lot of people m- might realize. Um, you know, when, when you know, Biz showed me the card, I didn't, didn't exactly like it so uh, he and I sat down to make it something that that we both liked and by the but through that process this really realized that we worked really well together and he was in love with what we were doing and uh this this had been initially really burnt out on what what was going on in the wrestling world in fact he was kind of bitter so we we kind of rejuvenated you know one another's passion for the business uh so to speak, by working with each other and just kind of being kids and, in a weird way, fantasy booking all these really great wrestlers in Texas that we had access to. Um, mm-hmm. But from there, neither Josh nor Biss really knew what to do in terms of finding a good venue or the right venue. And uh, I have a background in promoting rock shows uh, in mm-hmm. Austin. I, I book a local club as well. And so I had lots of access to, uh, you know, different venues and, from there, I kind of negotiated the venue, and from there, I just also took over the day of operations, just making sure that everything 
went off without a hitch. And I'm, I'm a very detail oriented guy. So definitely yeah. awesome. And I, and the detail stuff too, I think comes across in, in the booking and then the storylines that come across. I think that's one of our, personally, I feel that's one of our biggest strengths is the detail we, that is put into the storytelling. Uh, do you, do you have fun with that uh, sort of, writing out these cards and these stories and, and, and booking this company. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely rewarding because there's a lot of sacrifice involved. If it, you know, that that's the payoff and, you know, none of us are really doing this, you know, with dollar signs in our eyes, we're doing it because we really mm -hmm. love pro wrestling. Um, but yeah, that to me, yeah, I get, I get to kind of like to a really large extent show people what, what I think, good wrestling is I, I you know i presume that's what everybody does when they have their own company uh you know i I've, I've been really excited to take the approach where there is no wrestling for the sake of wrestling and everything has a purpose and there is absolutely no wasted space on the cards um seeds that i planted maybe three shows ago that might seem kind of meaningless may come into play like two months down the line or whatever uh from here mm -hmm. so yeah i I've I've really enjoyed the process. It's 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 really a wonderful uh, opportunity that this and Josh have given me. Now I may now I personally may know the answer to this, but I definitely want to ask this for for the viewers out there because you obviously in the storytelling you developed a lot of the characters that come through Inspire Pro and some of the 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 the, the I guess actors in this play I guess you could say. Um, what has been your the most satisfying uh, character or story you you've been able to produce? I think I may know the answer, but it uh, you know it's it's really hard to say. I'd say it has to be a tie between the Great Depression and uh, what we've done with Ricky Starks. Hmm. Ricky Starks, I would that was the other one I was thinking about, but yeah, definitely. I think the Great Depression is something that's been so unique to. Um, to our company that's almost sort of become our niche yeah. in a sense. And then it's people, I, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really crazy awesome because like I've seen a lot of fan art for him by people who aren't in Texas and people who've mm. never even really seen the character live. They've just seen kind of videos of him online. And so I see drawings and I see people talking about him. And that's, that's super rewarding. And I, I kind of attribute that to the fact that a lot of stuff with you is super colorful. I think, uh, and I've talked about this with some, some people recently and they, they, they tend to agree, but I think the influence of UFC and mixed martial arts in general has, has kind of had this weird stranglehold on, on wrestling for the last 10 years. And, you know, people have been kind of like biting on, on, on realism. And, uh, I think a lot of audiences are kind of getting tired of that. Hey, I'm a tough guy in trunks with kick pads kind of thing, you know, and I'm, I'm going to come out and, and, and prove that I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that, that's, a, that's a valuable component of wrestling to some extent, I guess. But I think when you throw really colorful characters at people now, they really respond because, A, it reminds them of a period of wrestling that they grew up with, and, B, they're so, they're so hungry for, for something with some color after just being kind of said really bland, tough guy characters over the last decade. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, the other thing I definitely want to talk about, because we did have an event uh, about a week and a half ago or, uh, in their blood event where the big announcement was made of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling joining the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, we, we talked on the show briefly. I had to talk about sort of my excitement coming off of that and stuff like that. We had a, a good discussion. Um, what What are your feelings coming out of, you know, sort of this monumental announcement that, you know, we're finally joining the, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance? Um... It's it's kind of surreal still. I don't think it's really it's really sunk in. Uh, I don't know I don't know how how that is for you. I mean I know that uh, Brandon Stroud uh, one of his dreams has always been to be an NWA announcer and now here he is. You know he's announcing for an affiliate. I don't you know you are now a common mm -hmm. commentator for the NWA. I, you know I don't it's know how your response has been to that or how you feel. I'd love to know what you how what you feel about that. You know we can have removed. Yeah, def no, it's it's crazy. It's it's. I mentioned this last week. It's sort of weird in a sense, like because I, I, I am newer to wrestling and very young, and to be able to sort of have that stamp to say, "Hey, you're a part of the NWA." That's it's crazy to me. It's it's really awesome. Yeah, I have I have a bit of anxiety too because you know we were um, we were in negotiations for a while. I, I know that you you actually went down with us mm -hmm. uh, when we did our first 
our first discussion with uh, Tony Brooklyn out of NWA Houston about joining. And, uh, you know, the timing at that point, it just, it, it, it didn't really work out for us. And I, I really wanted to be a company that wasn't just banking on that NWA, you know, tag on their company's name. I really wanted to be a company that could contribute something significant and different in terms of flavor to perhaps maybe broaden, broaden what people think of when they, when they, you know, when they see the NWA, you know, name affiliated with something, you know, I, I think, uh, I think we can contribute something completely unique to the brand that, that no one else is doing. So I'm, I'm really excited to do that. But at the same time, it makes me kind of anxious because I really want to, I really want to make, you know, Bruce and, and Tony and everybody else and, and the family very proud. And that's, I, I also, I use the word family because we went down to, uh, uh, NWA Houston to see uh, to see uh, Houston Carson face uh, Kojima for the uh, NWA World Title and walking into the building, it was just a really amazing uh, feeling of support and family. Everybody was just super sweet. I met like ten other affiliates and they were just very welcoming and warm. And you know, the minute you stepped in the locker room, it was just hugs and everybody was really happy. The vibe, the vibe feels really nice being uh, around many of those people. Uh, it, it does have a very family vibe. So it's exciting to know that there are peers that are really accepting of what we're doing and they're excited to have us be a part of it. Definitely. I sort of talked to that and we discussed that a bit last week, sort of the aspect of there is a feeling of, of camaraderie and, and uh, really the sense of working together that kind of comes rare when it comes to uh, to uh, independent wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's, I think it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of mutual respect between everybody. I mean, it's, and it's very rare that you have promoters so knit together in such a, you know, such a tight area all working together. So that's, that's really unique. It's something that a lot of people said could never be done, but, you know, they're, everybody I met has been incredibly supportive and they're all doing their own things, you know, their own styles and telling their own stories, but there doesn't seem to be any, you know, Hey, I'm doing this. Why aren't you doing this? And no one's arguing over continuity, which is which is really nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. Uh, so this is a question I posed to uh, Josh when we had him on the show, and then it's a question I wanted to pose to you as well. Uh, being somebody, and you mentioned sort of like the idea is how cool it is to you almost like get you investigating to like fantasy book in a sense. Uh, what's the one talent uh, who hasn't been uh, in Inspire Pro Wrestling yet that uh, you would like to see uh, compete for us? That's tough. Um, in, in, in within Texas? Or, uh, it can be within Texas or it can be, uh, you know, anywhere in the nation or, or even beyond that. that. I mean, that's such a wide pool. In Texas, um, Byron Wilcott has really uh, stepped up and grown on me. Um, I'd really like to do something with him. I think mm-hmm. that guy has, like, tons of potential and upside, and he's just – he was just totally charismatic, and, and uh, I think we could do something really, really interesting and, and fun with him. Uh, I'd also like to work with Jack Stane. Um, that guy's just a ball of positivity and has from the start when, you know, you, I'm sure that, that, that you're aware that when you're new into the business, you automatically run up against people who are going to criticize how you either came up or your newness as it is. Um, to, to the business and, and you know, they're, they're questioning your spot. And I, while I was getting some flack here or there, Jax was a really amazing presence and encouraging me to keep going and, and you know, telling me that I had every right to be doing what I was doing. And that, that was that was really phenomenal. He's a guy that I would like to work with because, A, he's just a, he's a beast. He has an amazing look. But just also what he contributes uh, in terms of uh, positivity to, you know, a locker room is, you know, you can't put a value on that. Um, but as far as people on a, on a national level, and there's so many car guys I would, I would love to work with. Um, <laughs> dream guy, number one wrestler that I would love to work with is Yamato. Um, oh, nice. I will, I will not be happy until one day we have Yamato in an Inspire ring. Uh, <laughs> I really want, I want Akira Tozawa to come back really badly. I would love to work with him, and uh, this is this is one that makes people kind of kind of kind of laugh a little bit. But I really want to work with Teddy Hart. <laughs> I just want to work with his cat. Yeah, Mr. Money. <laughs> Mr. Money. Everybody uh, wants a Mr. Money Mark photo. 
Yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with all those choices. Um, How about and, you? Who who do you want to see oh, Jesus. come to inspire? Oh God, the pressure. Um, I it's it's really been cool to getting to see like a lot of talents, uh, uh, big name talents come in and and uh, be able to uh, to work with them. Um, God, if I could think of one name that's sort of uh, that one's really tough. I would like to say like maybe like a uh, like. As far as like somebody who I think is breaking out and doing a lot, maybe like a Michael Elgin. I've always been super impressed yeah. with what he's been doing lately. Uh, Would love uh, to see him come down. Definitely, and he's he's one that just sort of sticks out in my mind as someone who's done a lot in indie wrestling, uh, especially this past year. So that that that'd be my one, but I I can give you a list definitely. <laughs> um, so we're coming up uh, this uh, couple really a couple weeks. Um, until our uh, one year anniversary for Inspire, you know, doing this for one full year. And then looking back in, you know, sort of, you know, this company that sort of lasted this uh, year's time, how, how, how do you feel sort of looking back in sort of the beginning, like the first show or even like the first meeting you had with this even? It, it, man, I mean, I think like kind of looking at, first of all, I'm proud of everything that we've accomplished, but I think, I think the, uh, I think I've gotten pretty good at doing what, what, what I'm doing. And I think this has too, and, and, you know, Josh too, and everybody's really grown. I mean, you too, behind, behind the common, the commentary uh, table, you, you stepped up and it's, you know, you, you've grown with comfort, with comfort comes the ability to just do your job better. Brandon Stroud is the uh, ring announcer. He's phenomenal. I think he might be the best announcer in Texas actually. And uh, you see kind of his nerves being shed over the last few shows. And he's really, kind of owning his position. Um, I think our shows just have continued to get better. You know, I, every time I think that we have a great show and I'm like, this, this is our best show. We, we all kind of come together to do something that's just so much bigger. And, uh, you know, it makes me excited, excited for, for what we're about to do. It's like when, when I look back to that first show, which I was really proud of, it seems like so far away. Like I feel kind of weirdly far removed from it. I don't know mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 it's strange looking back because I feel like what we're doing is just, just incredible right now. I'm really happy with it. I know, and, and I know that we're going to continue to do bigger and better things. Yeah, definitely. I, I think we definitely come a long way. Um, I guess the, the, one of the last things that I do want to ask before we sort of promote the upcoming event for Inspire is a question. It's sort of becoming our, our big question on this show, a question we ask everyone, um, sort of a, ba- a, a basis question of, of all of the indie wrestling world in general. Uh, and it is, what is your favorite thing about indie wrestling and what is your least favorite thing about indie wrestling? Oh, okay. Uh, this is interesting. Um, my favorite thing about indie wrestling uh, is the fact that there are so many independent companies that can cater to certain uh, niches in, in pro wrestling and they don't really have to abide by a very general standard when, you know, there's a lot of really amazing wrestling that's occurring in, you know, uh, WWE and, but, but they also have to be very mindful about uh, doing something that appeals to a much broader audience. And I think that uh, a lot of larger independent companies know their audience, but it, you know, it's a, it's a smaller audience. And while I know that they're probably striving to grow, they they they're less confined by by you know rules. Uh, Shakar, for instance, can can go. You know they they don't they don't have a huge machine on their back. They have to worry about carrying. You know, um, so they can take risks and do incredibly creative stuff. I love stuff like that. Um, mm. In terms of stuff I don't like, uh, I think anything that's overly spotty where guys just basically trade kicks for 20 minutes, no sell each other's <laughs> finisher, and then the finisher comes out of nowhere. I, I hate I hate stuff like that. Not pointing well, any fingers at anybody the, directly, but I know that there's probably some wrestlers that you can think of <laughs> that work in certain companies that <laughs> that would apply to. Yeah, definitely sort of veering away from, like, the more story stuff and just sort of going into the, hey, you know. Yeah, it's is- like a Ripley's Believe It or Not splash fest with people doing really stupid stiff stuff and – and, uh, you know, yeah, there's not much logic or sense to it. It's just they're just trying to pop the crowd nonstop and exhaust them. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, that, it's, it's, a, it's a style that is popular amongst the, you know, 
it's the most diehard of smarts, I think, at times. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I wish I wish some guys would dial it back and make some of what they do mean more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we do have an event coming up for Inspire Pro in about a week and a half's time, uh, June fifteenth, coming up our anniversary show, Clash at the Bash. Uh, tell us, tell us about this show. What are you, what are you excited about going into, uh, into what's to be sort of a annu- an annual event for us? Uh, there is really nothing that I am not excited about on this card. I think it is a rock <laughs> solid card from top to bottom. Uh, I am, I am. If I had to choose one match that I'm most excited about seeing, it's probably Matthew Palmer versus Ray Rope, the number one contendership to the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy I'm that, sure that we have the opportunity to sort of put that yeah. match out there. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a really phenomenal match, and it's a, it's a first time. So no, neither man has ever met each other in the ring, and I'm <clears throat> I, I uh, a lot of people are anticipating something something really high caliber. You know, every every show has a match that could steal the show and become match of the night. Um, and, and looking back, every show has like that one match that kind of gets popular on the internet, like, you know, Sammy versus ACH or uh, Sammy Guevara versus ACH was, was you know, a, a, a phenomenal match that a lot of people talked about. Uh, Watsonabe mm-hmm. versus Dalton from uh, No Room to Die. Uh, the latter match from the last show, I think, you know, it, we've got this lineage of like you know show stealers on our on our cards, and I think that uh, Palmer Row could potentially be one of those matches. Absolutely, I would I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I'm I'm super excited for this entire card, like you mentioned. Uh, also, uh, I'm very excited for the the theme of the event uh, as uh, Beach Attire is encouraged. Uh, so I'll have to yes. bust out I'll have to bust out my best look. So. Yeah, it's, it's, this has been a, an interesting and different show for me to put together, man. I'm trying to track down rentable palm trees. It's, it's been a little hard. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, uh, Hollywood Knives. I'm very excited to see these guys finally work as a tag team, you know. Uh, yeah, so. That was really, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so that's uh, June 15th coming up, uh, about a week and a half's time. Uh, uh, if, if they want to check out Inspire Pro, if they haven't checked out Inspire Pro, um, where, where can they find uh, Inspire? Where can they look us up and, and, and sort of get involved and, and, and see what we're doing? Well, you can find our website at uh, inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, we have a Facebook presence. Uh, just look up Inspire Pro. Look for the seal. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, the first uh, the first uh, six shows I believe that we've uh, done are available for free on the site. Uh, so you can you can catch up and and check out everything that we've done. And you know, we've got a lot of really amazing matches filmed, and the quality uh, has steadily just been getting better and better thanks to Lex uh, Librand at Greenlit Studios. Awesome, definitely. Uh, so thank you, Max, for coming on. Thank you for uh, filling that trifecta now uh, of uh, the Inspire Pro crew. Uh, we'd love to have you on again sometime. Uh, and I believe me and Sorg are going to dive into a bit some of the indie wrestling news we have going on. All right, well, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Eamon, and uh, a great interview there. Great to find out more going on with Inspire Pro. Uh, I, you know, I did, I, I told you... I. I, I've been watching bits and pieces, but I watched through my first full show with Inspire actually this last week. Um, I did see that. I love that. I, I, it was, and it's it, it's it, it's such a great show. Um, so looking forward to see what comes from you guys. Now I'll have to get those uh, some other way. Uh, but <laughs> on, on the, you can get you can pick up a DVD or a video on demand. It's you know. <laughs> yes, on SmartMarkVideo uh, uh, dot com, where uh, you can find some of uh, stuff we're, we work on here too. Um, Absolutely. So we're gonna get, to, we're gonna to get, to get that guy. Pro. We're gonna have to get that guy on because I've been emailing with him and I, I've been yes, thinking definitely. about inviting him on the show and having a, a chat with him about the whole wrestling biz from his perspective. You know, he did uh, the the Mike Burns, I believe his name is, uh, mm-hmm. just won the or was was. Uh, presented with the uh, uh, indie wrestling, uh, 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 oh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot the name of it, but it's the uh, it's the, the one they presented every year. Or something. The one they get the Coca band of the first year. Uh, so it was really great to see that. I'd like to talk to him about about that at some point. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but, but this weekend you had a show that you went to this weekend. I did. I did. I worked the uh, Dustin Batdorf Invitational Three Dropkick Addiction up in Mes- Maslin, Ohio. 
Um, such a great event, you know, and 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 I don't really know this, but uh, uh, you know, because I don't know the Ohio scene, you know, I don't know who these big names are in Ohio. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm told like you know, this is a lot of like a lot of guys that don't normally come together in Ohio. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, and the usual usual suspects were there, you know, Juice Jennings and and you know uh, guys I'd usually see come down to RWA. Uh, for a while there, um, um, things have stuck out. Uh, Mikey D and No Shame Jimmy Page, I, Jimmy Shame Page, something like that. Uh, they had a last <laughs> dance match, which turned into huh. a dance off, the longest dance off I think I've ever experienced, uh, uh, ending with a pin. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was like one of those kind of fun spots. Uh, they had a thing where they had this. Uh, I think he's an Iranian uh, character that comes out every year. Uh, and, uh, he's never booked on it, ends up in a match, seems to happen every year. Uh, but they had a guy at ringside that was a, uh, supposedly a Marine and, uh, uh, happened to be a new wrestler. Uh, so they worked that into a kind of Rusev, you know, as we've been seeing on WWE flag waving affair to the point where the good guys came out to the all American Hulk Hogan music, real American music. And I, I, Cause when, I what else, what other music? Cause what else would they could do? Some... I guess that's, this was the first time I've been at, I worked ringside, which is like, I haven't done that since probably this event last year. So, so being mm-hmm. able to film that and a flag waving and the, uh, and the, the Hulk Hogan music, uh, I gotta say I geeked out a little bit there. Um, but big surprise of the night, Ricky Shane page, who I know we know from, IWC uh, does a lot of stuff with AIW, kind of a crazy character up there. Uh, he had a match with, um, let's see if I can pull it up here. I kept forgetting the guy's name. Relentless Ron Mathis. Have you heard of this guy? I have heard of Ron Mathis. I believe Ron Mathis wrestles for um, CZW a bit. I, I, I understand. Not, that. If I'm not mistaken, he's actually a student of Sammy Callahan's. Okay, uh, that makes I, a lot of sense. You, I may be wrong about that. That makes but a I, ton I of sense. Right. These guys come out, and granted, the show is in a church. Paige comes out. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, yeah. Paige comes out with a spike. Okay. Um, oh, does not get used in the match. They fight all over the place. Um, I don't think... The, the, I don't know. The match was a Falls Count Anywhere match. So they went into the stands, did a bunch of stuff. Um, they started the match with, with like, just... Page and the other guy yelling, I like to hit and I like to get hit. And they just kind of had a a punch off, you know, leading one like, oh, that was good. Give me with another one, you know, like back and forth for a while. It was not the kind of match I expected in a, in, in, in a church. But I, I mean, I, I think they got in that environment. No, 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 not not what I expected, uh, but very pleasant. Um, so it, that that was kind of the surprise of the night there. Um, uh, really good. Uh, oh, Who's this other guy? Um, um, they they had a lot of fun with uh, his name. I know he goes by Dark Star, and I'll I'll bring up his name in a, in a Matt Taylor. I think his name is um, this guy. I, I think I I caught on commentary the first year that he might have had a, uh, a stop at TNA potentially. Um, okay, and he's actually uh, here on 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 this flyer uh, right there in the front left. Uh, over there, and also uh, uh, apparently the current holder of the Lucha Core belt, which I got the inside story of what the Lucha Core deal is. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know it, that was uh, Sammy Callahan's fed, and apparently now oh, okay. now I've people Corp, now people know. just kind of take the belt with them wherever they want to go. <laughs> and the, the the belt is beat to hell, and it's uh, fine. Sammy's busy. Oh yeah, Sammy's busy. So they're just like, oh, we, we we can do some stuff with this belt, you know, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, Matt Taylor won the whole thing, of course. Um, I, I, I I told Juice afterwards, I was like, that was the most entertaining, best wrestled show you guys have done yet. Like, I thought mm-hmm. top to bottom, because before I was like, ah, it's jokey stuff, to, you know, it's an invitational, da, da, da. But it was like, there was a good match after match after match on that one, on, on this card. And I was really impressed by it. Um, and I really hope we can get some get this out for a lot of people to see it. And, and it's for a good cause and everything, of course, uh, for the Souls Foundation over there in Ohio, uh, which helps, you know, uh, uh, promote, uh, uh, you know, anti-drug addiction uh, and everything there. So uh, really cool. I, I mean, the only difference is like, like there was a Canadian distorter that co- got pulled out, and this is not a wrestling crowd. <laughs> like oh, this is not an explicit wrestling crowd. So there's a lot of points where it was just like, everybody should be going bonkers right now. Nope, nope, nope. They just don't understand. <laughs> they just don't get it. They're just like, 
this is a good show and yay you're wrestling i think i watched that once on tv um mm-hmm. but there you go there you go um but no, DBI three. It'll be on DVD, uh, digital download here shortly from Sorgatron Media. Uh, I'm looking forward to get that thing edited here soon. Uh, so, and uh, beyond that, there's some other stuff. Hey, there's something coming up actually in the area in this weekend. Uh, oh and, yeah. Uh, VOW we've talked about before. Vicious Outcast Wrestling, mm-hmm. and it might be some cool stuff coming up with them actually. So keep stay tuned. Um, but they are actually holding a show in Connellsville, PA, outskirts of, P- uh, of, of, of Pittsburgh, uh, a bit. I'm going to try to bring up their info here. Um, uh, but they, I know one thing they're kind of, you're going to have the Assyrian portal against, uh, our, our show favorites, Generation Dead. Ew, I, I, that could be really good actually. Um, these guys, these are, are getting a, a good bit of, 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 um, Car talent. Um, mm. I mean, these again. These are guys. My, my Facebook isn't. Working. I'm sorry, I, guys. I am. I am um, three sheets of the wind, sick and everything, and I don't know how to type <laughs> sorry, anything. Sorry, hanging in there. I'm sorry. trying. I'm trying to get through this. Uh, how do you spell vicious? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, anyways, no, but no, uh, they're going to... No, uh, Jason Gorey and... And, uh, and Syrian it, Portal. And, and, uh, G-Raver's the other guy. G-Raver, that's right. It's that G-Raver um, guy. That guy. With the hair no, and the I, face paint stuff. I, I think mixing with guys like the Portal could be really awesome. I, I think if you're near that area, you should definitely uh, check that out. Because, I, I mean, the Portals, obviously, they've established themselves as amazing you know, wrestlers. So I, I definitely think that could be one to look out for. There is June Judgment 2, Saturday the 7th. I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on doing, it. Doing 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 your monster truck. You know, I'm so. really glad I don't do I don't edit the shows afterwards anymore because this would be a problem. Um, but no, Chance Prophet, who I keep hearing about, Jimmy Nuts, friend of the show, is on here. Tim Donst of Chikara uh, fame is guy. on here. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on with these guys. I wish they had more than a Facebook page that I could show you. But there it is. No, that's not. That's the other guy. There it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, other things are going on. Oh, you'll go, just look up Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Nobody else has a name like that. You can find them easily on Facebook <laughs> and get all the information. I'm sure of it. Better than I can deliver at this point. Eamon? There's, yeah, there's, uh, there's some other stuff going on this weekend. Uh, stuff that I was told to mention about was uh, one thing. Uh, House of Hardcore. Uh, has a weekend of events this weekend, Friday the 6th in Poughkeepsie, New York, and uh, Saturday the 7th in Philadelphia at the National Guard Armory. Uh, Hardcore, the promotion run, I believe, are are founded by um, uh, Tommy Dreamer. Uh, I would say probably out of the ECW-esque shows, probably one of the better ones you'll find. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, we've talked about the history of some of the other ones. Rowdy Roddy Piper's coming! He is coming! Uh, There's a lot of good names on here. Uh, Al Snow, The Godfather, uh, Alex Reynolds, who you may recognize, Sorg, from uh, uh, IWC. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Drew Gulak, uh, uh, former CCW champion. Petey Williams, uh, Tony Nice, uh, Chris Hero. There's a lot of good names on here. Uh, wow. The recently uh, uh, IWGP champion, AJ Styles. Uh, tons of really good stuff. Uh, a lot of really good a lot of really good names on the show now that I'm looking at it. Uh, uh, a lot of different stuff. Uh, like I said, it's mix- it seems to be a mix of like the ECW style with some of the modern independent wrestling. And then also there's some TNA in there and, and some classic WWE. So it could be some fun stuff. They got a uh, show so- coming up on uh, the 14th. Uh, I guess we can put on this. Th- but the names are incredible on this. They got uh, – <laughs> Wow. They got Piper, Chavo, uh, Cass, Michelle, uh, uh, Sandman, X Pac, uh, 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 Carlito, Z- Big Zeke, the guy that won me my uh, WWE Death Pole, Matt Stryker, Mike Bennett. Jesus. I mean, oh my God, Bad Influence, Rikishi, Ron Simmons, Adam Pierce. Uh, uh, Gangrel's gonna be there. What's Gangrel's gonna be there? <laughs> Holy crap! Don't I hope he doesn't. Never mind. Um. But no, it looks like a really good lineup, actually. It's good stuff, and it's like one of the rare ECW uh, reunion guys that actually seem to be doing good business. Yes. 
So, Absolutely. So go so support good for them that. because Tommy Dreamer is a good guy. I'm assuming. I'm probably he's probably a real good. Guy. I hear nothing but good things about him. I hope that doesn't that doesn't get ruined. Um, but no, I like I like no hey, Tommy Dreamer. There's nothing that'll ruin your reputation more than running a promotion in wrestling. No, not at all. Um, but there's also a promotion that I do want to talk about uh, specifically for one big match that I'm so. So upset that I am missing. Oh my! Uh, a company called uh, IHWE, uh, who's here in Texas in the Fort Worth area. They have an event coming up this Sunday, June eighth, uh, with the I'm assuming main event because good God, this better be the main event. Uh, Thomas Shire, and if you've never heard of Thomas Shire, he is one of the top up and coming wrestlers in the state of Texas. He works for Inspire. Uh, he's amazing. He is one of those, and he will never tell you how amazing he is, but he is amazing. <laughs> and then he's one of my favorite wrestlers to see. He is going one on one with the Texas wrestling debut of Johnny Gargano. Oh my God. He's never and wrestled is, in Texas? I, this, to my knowledge, Johnny's first time in Texas. Oh, wow. And this, and this looks really, really good. Um, and there's also a lot of talent on there that I know of uh, from working with Inspire, Franco D'Angelo, uh, Barrett Brown, Gregory James. A lot of good guys are on that show. But good God, if you are not going to Texas to see that match, what is wrong with you? <laughs> because not only, I mean, Gargano, obviously. I mean, you know Gargano, especially. From oh, the, yeah. He's, he's a Pittsburgh, or a Pittsburgh, Ohio native, pretty much. Already um, a match of the year candidate, him and Facade uh, meeting yet again uh, in IWC uh, back in March, I think. <laughs> Yeah, but him against Thomas Shire uh, can't be anything but amazing. Uh, I'm I'm so upset that I'm not seeing that. But I, I think you should. It's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas uh, this Sunday, June 8th. If you want more information, go to IHWENow.com, and they have a Facebook page as well uh, with a lot of information on there uh, about the show and some of their upcoming stuff. So go support them. Uh, that's the in the events uh, that I have for this weekend, Sorg. Excellent. And I have nothing else. I probably should stop talking now and go to bed. Uh, so <laughs> well, with that... you do, I do want to also point out, as we do every week, uh, even if there was an event we did not mention on this show, because there is probably indie events everywhere in the United States or Canada or uh, other countries this weekend, go to those shows if they're nearby you or if even they're not nearby you. Go out there, support indie wrestling, support indie wrestlers, uh, and, and give them, you know, the, the support they deserve because they really do bust their ass. A Excellent. lot of them. Definitely. Um, obviously, not all of them. But, um, well, you know, we, we touched on some of the good, the better indie wrestling. Yes. Uh, you'll find. Yes. But, yeah, go, go support indie wrestling. Go anywhere you can find it. And, of course, you can uh, find this show, other shows, and support us. So we can keep doing this and talking about the stuff yes, we love. At rest, this show, at least my part, not – indicative of the quality typically of these shows wrestling man show.com hey. itunes stitcher spreaker youtube subscribe favorite comment please send to your friends drop us a line at good times at wrestling man show.com 412-206 wms0 at man show on twitter wrestling man show on facebook facebook groups google plus all kinds of place we're here live tuesdays live.sorgatronmedia.com and again, shout out to Basic Sickness for the theme you're about to hear, basicsickness.com. Thanks, Eamon. Great interview. And, Thank you, uh, Sorg. We'll see you guys next week. Support some indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the poor.